Over three gigabytes. Oh my god, are we gonna hit four? Four, no way. Four, four, four. <gasps> oh, damn. That's right, we're cooking now. We got the Deco BE2200. And I got these things on sale. I wanted to upgrade my Wi-Fi 6E to Wi-Fi 7. I wanted to see if I could get extra speeds. Recently, about a couple years ago, um, fiber optic came into my area and then Sonic came after AT&T and they really upped the bandwidth. I think I did the test, you'll see in the video. It's, it, I'm actually getting seven gigabytes into my house from the router, from the modem. So these are gonna take advantage of that. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of different testing applications and why I ended up buying the TP-Link brand over Asus and Netgear and also kind of my decision making and why you might wanna invest in Wi-Fi 7 and why you might not as well. So placement of router, I have my router in a, underneath my primary story of my house near my garage. And um, you can see here I have four ports and uh, these things are huge. These are really big routers. I have a two pack. I have one on the first level by the garage and then one upstairs. And you can see here, I'm just wired directly into the uh, modem from here. Um, this thing has a huge power supply, so do keep that in mind. And then setting it up was really easy. You just open up the app. It's called Deco. And then once you get it all set up, you know, it just you connect on Wi-Fi on your phone, and then it's working. You could set up different bands, whether you want to do the MLO. We'll talk about MLO later. But you have the Wi-Fi 5 and then the 2.4 gig uh, bands. And so you can set all that up within the app, and it's very easy easy to do, very user friendly. Here you could see my internet speed coming from my modem. So my fiber optic is gonna be about six gigabytes download and then seven gigabytes upload. And what we're going to do first is share with you why I bought this one and the pros and the cons on paper, and then I'll show you the actual results. In case you're wondering, the box. Here's a big hand, it's huge. You got the two pack, you get a one pack or three pack as well. Mind you, this is Wi-Fi. We're not even plugged in. So this laptop is equipped with Wi-Fi 7 too. So that's part of the, the reason. I'm happy with that. They're telling me I'm perfect for streaming and gaming. I'm ready to go. Man, that's insane. Let's just do it one more time. See if we can replicate those results. Yes, yes we can. Over three gigabytes. Oh my God, are we gonna hit four? Four, no way, four, four, four. <gasps> oh, damn. That's super impressive. Got my phone, Samsung S20, um, S24. This one though, with my phone, it just goes crazy. It starts low and then it just goes. Yeah. I think I was getting like 15, 16 on the phone. Yeah. Oh, more. Just keeps going. So, 17.5 on the phone. The more you do it, the faster it goes. So you can see there, yeah, 16, 17, so about half the computer. <clears throat> but this is an over a year old phone where this is a brand new computer. I imagine that the, the Wi-Fi cards in here are slightly different. All right, and then let's go ahead and uh, wire, we're gonna now wire the computer in. Yeah, I've noticed that, that I'm actually getting better Wi-Fi speeds than I am with the um, with the Wi-Fi. But what we need to do is also we need to compare the ping. Because if you notice the ping, that's up here, right? The idle latency is four. The download latency is 18, upload is 14. We're gonna compare those to the other numbers. Yeah, you can see that the ping is slightly higher on the, um, on the Wi-Fi, but look at the download speeds on the Wi-Fi, 3.4 gigabytes, four gigabytes, 2.3. So, yeah, Wired's gonna have lower ping. 
So I think wired would still give you a slightly better experience, but they're so close now with the Wi-Fi 7. And then the flexibility you get with not being confined with a wire is, you know, that's, that's a big deal. So we're now connected back to the Wi-Fi. We're in a totally different room. We should still be on the, uh, the router that's under us. It's gonna be going through quite a few walls now. Um, I would say we're about 75 feet away. And so I just wanna test it now that we're much farther and there's some walls between us. So much, much, much slower as you're seeing here. As I mentioned, we're quite a distance from the router. I am gonna retest this, and I think on the retest, we're gonna get a much larger number. So let's just go ahead and, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and stop it really quick, refresh. I think we just connected to, I think it's gonna do a lot better the second time. Oh, I guess not. So there you go, only about five or 600 here. Just goes to show like, distance really cripples this stuff, especially on those those uh, those not as long distance bands, you know, like the five and the six and the seven. <clears throat> so not great at all. I'm, I'm gonna just stop that. You can even see on the, you can see on the Wi-Fi on the bottom, I even have one less antenna. So not as, not as good. Still plenty fast to do most of what you wanna do. Let's go ahead and uh, do the phone now. Same spot, but with the phone. The phone does a little bit better, I found, with distance, but we'll see. Almost identical, 560. You can see 560 on the computer, and we can see 560 here. So, 520, 560. Very, very similar. We're now underneath the router. So the router is right underneath this floor. There is a whole entire floor and subfloor between us, but we definitely do not have a direct line of sight. Let's go ahead and check it out. It's gonna be much faster than the 75 feet away. Yeah, look at that. So it went through the wall, no problem whatsoever. Now there's a wood wall and there's no metal. There's no concrete. It is a wood wall, so that's probably why. If we had to go through concrete, I think it'd be different. Okay, and the phone here is gonna be very similar if we're seeing this here, so I'm not gonna replicate that one. Here's my satellite router. It sits in, closer to the backyard in the back of the house, so I have connectivity all the way towards the back of the house. And then the primary router, although it's down a story, it's actually closer to the front of the house, and so that's how I'm able to kind of balance the coverage, but it's definitely good enough outside for the first time in months. No, uh, let's go ahead and give this a whirl. Outside, we're definitely on the satellite now. We probably relinked to the satellite. We're on the second router, not the primary router hooked up to the modem. And uh, not bad, but we do have a line of sight. We're over seven, we're about 75 feet away, but we have a line of sight. There's no walls, there's a window. There's no wall particularly, it's kind of a window, so. I think that's why we're getting a little bit better speeds here. You can also see that the we have full bands on the uh, reception area. And look at that, yeah. So I think if we retest, if the upload's up to nine, I think if we retest, we should get a gig on the down two if we do a retest here, now that it's established kind of connection. Yep. So I'm very impressed. Very, very impressive there especially for being outside. Again, this is the laptop though, brand new Wi-Fi 7 card inside of it. Let's go ahead and uh, run this on my phone. Once I don't wanna run them at the same time once this is done running. So there you go. I think that's plenty of speed for being outside your house. And then, here we go. We are still on the Wi-Fi. Let's go ahead and run test. So 
our computer did 15, but remember the phone goes up like crazy towards the end. Like it keeps going, it has legs, I've noticed. Alright, so eight and a bit if I retest it'll go a little faster. Slightly faster in the nines. Probably get to a gig. Or close. Alright, there you go. These were the routers that I replaced. I purchased these ones November of 2022. So almost three years ago, I paid approximately $220 out the door for an open box unit. And then I sold these for around a hundred. So I made a little bit of my money back, but this is the router I was coming from. And to give you an idea, I was, I could not get over a gigabyte. And that was just purely because of the ports on this thing. If you look at the port here, yeah, they're just gigabit ports. So I was just maxed out at the gigabit. So that's why a lot of this video, I don't show you my old setup at all because it was limited by the ports on the back of this unit. But I did get the Wi-Fi 6T, the extra backhaul drive. It was a very good router. If you need something low end, I highly recommend it, especially if your uh, internet provider isn't giving you bigger, isn't giving you input. But then again, going up to Wi-Fi 7, another reason why people upgrade is to future-proof your network. So here are the, the routers in this video, the BE85s, Wi-Fi 7, also known as the BE22000s. And you can see here it's $600. I went down here and I did the new and used. There was one that was used acceptable for $430. So I got mine for under 500. And let me tell you, Amazon hooked me up because they gave me a like new unit. This unit had never seen the light of day. Somebody opened the box and just resealed it. All the stickers were on. The manual was still sealed. The, the LAN cable that they provide was still sealed. There's no way you could have opened it. All the stickers were still on the router. Like it was just the cleanest thing I've ever seen. I really lucked out on that. So uh, I paid 500. If I actually had to pay 800 plus tax where I am at 10%, like $900, I would have had a harder time gulping this up. But the more I think about it, and, and like the last one I owned for three years, I could see myself owning this one for five, divided by five, it's like 100 bucks a year. Anyways, look at this. Two 10 gigabit ports, plus it has this F SFP plus option, USB 3, and then two 2.5 gigabit bit ports and then remember you can always add you know a little network switch or something like that if you need additional ports which is going to be a lot cheaper this was my main criteria when buying a new router i wanted to get at least five gigabit ports none of this 2.5 gigabit stuff i want to get all the way up to five or ten and that's what I, exactly what i got for this so you can see some of the some of the features it has up to 20, 20, 22,000 megabits per second. Some of the other options I was looking at was the Netgear. Netgear seems to be the best, both Dong knows, but also like all the PC magazines. Everyone says Netgear is awesome. I agree, I think they are awesome. I've had the Orbeez in the past, but the price difference for what you get is just crazy high. So if you got the money, definitely check out the Netgear. The one that I might've purchased would have been the Aero Pro 7s. Um, what I was thinking is one, they just got released. The Aero Max has been out for a little bit, but the Aero Pros are fairly new. And what I was thinking, I only need a two pack, not a three pack. So it's actually slightly cheaper retail. Uh, but there's two things that stop me from buying this. Uh, number one, the ports, only five gigabit, right? So right there, that's already a deal breaker for a lot of people. That's not 10 gigabit ports. Number two, buying a brand that's owned by Amazon for my home network and security, kind of scary. Number three, I've heard that they hide some of the premium features on a subscription model. And uh, number four, I was waiting for Amazon Prime Day to do to see if these go on sale or not. I think they might. Prime Day is like tomorrow, I think, as I'm recording this video. But um, even then, I got mine for 500 out the door. They're better in all kinds of ways. And uh, Dong Nose Tech hates these arrows. So... You know, I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll go with the TP-Link. Also, just know with the TP-Link, I'm well aware of the security concerns with these particular routers. And the other option that I really like, I have had the Asus Zen Wi-Fi in the past, really great. But again, the price point is just a little high. You are going to get those ports you're going you're gonna to want. Um, looks like you have two 
10 gig lines, which again, not that great. And for $1,000, this thing is definitely going to perform better than the ones I have. But, um, you know, with the power draw and everything else, you know, I, I just didn't need it. But I would absolutely put this on your list of potentials is, is check out the Asus Zen Wi-Fi um, lineup. And then they make some cheaper models. Definitely get the, the quad band, go for the upgrade model, especially if you have a large home or something like that. After I bought these routers, I was like, man, the power supply on this new router is massive compared to the other ones. And I was like, I wonder how much more per year this router is going to cost me to run because these things are on all the time. They're running my home security and all kinds of other stuff. So um, to give you an idea, um, this is plus two routers. So um, I guess we can cut this in a third um, because I only have one satellite. So I guess if I took the $20 off, it's still double. You can see I've doubled my electricity bill from $20 a year to $40, let's say $40. The other thing I'm not doing is I'm not running the MLO line at all. So um, that's saving me some power as well. I'm running less lines. And then I, I my 10 gigabit ports, I'm only using one at the moment, which is from the router. I'm not using the second one right now. But as I use that, that potentially can take up more resources as well. So as you see here, this router I have does have the MLL capabilities where it's using a bunch of different bands and then they use them together and it optimized based on those bands. But here's the thing, long story short, I did not see any performance on both my phone or my laptop when using an MLO network versus just using the regular Wi-Fi 6 network. Zero benefit whatsoever. Somebody on this video could tell me why I want to run it. As I mentioned, I only have a few devices that even can take advantage of Wi-Fi 7, but I do know having MLO capabilities is great. And then as the software updates come out or that technology gets better, hopefully I can utilize it then. But my experience with MLO, my real world take on them, there was zero performance increase there. But that is one of the big things with Wi-Fi 7. So, and then in summary here, we could see that Wi-Fi 7 supports 320 megahertz channel width doubling of the Wi-Fi 6E. I think that's where I'm seeing some, some improvements. MLO isn't quite ready yet for my application, but I like having that capability. Lower latency is huge, right? At the, the latency, I, I this has just been, so this is big for not only gaming, but on your Facebook feed or your Reddit feed or something like that, as you're scrolling, my thing just scrolls perfectly. It never, it barely stops. There's like a, such a small pause where on my old Wi-Fi, you'd, sometimes you'd have to like load the screen a little bit. And this is just, so much better. Um, I haven't had these this issue at all in the past, but it's nice to know. And then future proofing, exactly. You gotta you gotta take the price of a unit like this and divide it over the lifespan of the unit. And so for you know ten dollars a month or whatever it ends up equating to, it's worth the upgrade.